Hi, my friend. Today is our long awaited kickoff of Will You Be My Neighbor? This is something I ran in the past and I actually never finished doing all the blocks. So now we're going to kick it off again and we're starting with block one. So I have quite a few of the blocks done, as you can see over at my website for the download page. But here is what I've had done. There's actually a little another row underneath and we're going to start with block one and that is this glorious block right here. So you'll be able to the link to download the pattern is at my website today. It's also under this video. So you get to make a house and a tree and you can see I planned mine so that it's they're actually Christmas fabrics and there's a lot of red and green with a bit of aqua and polka dots, the black with the white polka dots through everything. So first block is yours today. <laughs> you are ready to do it. Tomorrow on Tuesday at this video, I will go and get all of my Will You Be My Neighbor fabrics out and talk you through the fabric choices that I pulled together when I first did this, but we're going to do that tomorrow. Okay, string bean blocks. I have the weekend one, which was, uh, there was Sunday's block and that will complete the row here, but I realized that I actually needed the black in the center here. So I'm going to take the pair it off and switch them and then I'll have the six across. And so for today's block, I have the parrot. Every row will have one parrot block, just like this shows up here, but I will alternate them so they're not like all stacked underneath each other. We don't want that. We want them all spread around. Now the last thing we're going to do today is finish up our quilter stand for Ukraine block. And thank you again so much for donating to UNICEF to help the children of Ukraine. You have just blown me away. And the blocks that you're making, the quilts that you're making like this are phenomenal. So I'm going to show you how to get the hanging sleeve on and how I do the dowel rod and show it on my door. In order to quilt this up, I need to get some batting. And first I always keep like this bag of bigger pieces, sometimes smaller pieces. And I try to just use them up. I can stein them together into something, but let's first see what I have that might work for the star. So this is the bag, fancy trash bag. And I have a bunch of pieces in here and some of them are different uh, battings. I don't, you know, if I'm sending this to the long armor, sometimes they have something personal like this isn't even batting. This is fleece, fusible fleece. Uh, which I do a, a lot of times for like table runners, but I'm not using that today. See, a lot of this stuff is skinny strips and that's not big enough. But when I've cut off my own batting, sometimes then I have a bigger piece. So like here I have, this is a bit wider. Those are more skinny strips. So this is a bit wider and I could probably cut that in half and then put the two of them, you know, together. But let's see. What do I have here? The same. See, it's about the same width, maybe a little bit wider, but I don't have a second one. And then here is something also about the same width. Now these two are the same material and this is a different, a different batting. So let's see, I'm going to, I think we'll just see what this one will do. Take the quilt. So it is about at, it is about right in a little bit more than half. So that's good. So I will, cut the batting in half here. It's just folded. See, it's a long piece. So there's two parts. So right where this seam is, I will just fold it. And I'm just weird about batting. Whenever I uh, use the rotary cutter on the batting, then the, the um, batting gets stuck into the, like the, where you're slicing it on the mat and you get these little pieces of batting and I never like that. So instead I just cut it because I don't need a straight line or anything too wonderful. So there we go. So now I've got two pieces. So what I would do is I will need to have my backing, but first I just want to see if they're going to be big enough just to double check before I go any further. What I will do is kind of, uh, once I have them ready, I will just overlap them a little bit right here for a wall hanging, for anything really. I mean, a lot of people will like put them side by side and maybe use some of those tapes that, that um, you know, put them together. But I find for a small piece, they don't shift. I'm going to um, spray base this. All right, plenty. See, I have got plenty, plenty, plenty. There's some down here. I have even more up at the top there. I shift it for you, see? See up at the top and plenty on the sides. So what I can do 
is cut my backing then this star which will flip it over the star will come here plenty of room I've got here I can turn it over so you can see it weller weller better <laughs> weller so I've got this much on either side because it's not going to a long arm I don't don't need to have more for it to go on the rollers it can be very I can be very frugal so at this point I will go ahead and cut the backing so I'm already here I'll just go ahead and cut across and now I'm ready to baste it and I will end up flipping this so that my I have backing face up, I mean wrong side up, backing wrong side up, batting on top, and then the quilt top, the flimsy, on top of this. And then you always want to check again. Even if you think you're like, oh yeah, baby, I got enough room on all those sides, check anyways. Check under here to be sure that it didn't shift. So there I have plenty of room, but this, it's really close. I'm, whoops, I'm down here. This is really close right there. See, I need to shift that over because on this side, I have plenty. So this whole star needs to shift a little bit so that I'm not right on the edge. I wanna have enough on all four sides that I don't have to think about it being close to the edge because there's no reason, there's plenty here. Let's go. I'm now on the end of my table and I have showed you this before. So it's a really easy, simple spray basting. I am doing it inside. You can do it outside, of course. Um, I'm doing just a small piece, so that's why I feel like I'm okay doing this inside because I'm very close to it and I just work in little segments. And so I'm not sort of spraying out all over the place with the spray basting. I do remove my big wool mat from the ironing board because I do not want to get any basting spray on that. And my ironing board, here it is. And so I am using 505. And basically, I will I'll spray base on the batting, and then I will use a little warm iron to press it afterwards. But there are edges here. See all these edges? And I don't want to spray base past them for two reasons. One, it makes it sticky to touch. And the other is it wastes it because I don't need it out here. So what do I do? I have one of these iron away markers, the Frixon. They don't necessarily write on the batting very well, but <laughs> you, you can also use like a Sharpie because it really doesn't matter. You're not going to be having this on your quilt. It is just sort of a little place marker for yourself. So I am just doing this, making a few little dashes like this so that when I pull it back that you, I can see where the edge of this is. And it, um, it works out really well. That way I know as I'm going along exactly what I want to be doing. So let me shake this up a little bit and I will pull this back and then just spray a little bit on here. This can's getting low. Now I will put the top back down and take my warm iron and just uh, press it. Now, do you need to do this? Probably not, but I feel like one, it dries it a little bit quicker so that it adheres. Uh, and I don't know, it just seems, it just seems to work nicely. Now I will take the little sandwich and start rotating it off of the ironing board because this part is basted. <clears throat> We're gonna have to reverse this and do it on the back side too. But now I'll just fold this up and it goes to about where I was. And now I will do another little, do this whole section. And you see, I didn't mark the lines down here, which I should have. There we go. I will do it on the next part. So this goes ahead and presses, which doesn't take very long. I, I'm not trying to do anything major. Just give it a little bit of warmth. And then now I'm on the very bottom edge from the front. And I will go ahead and take the marker and do a few more lines on here so I know where my top edge is. I do find that probably a Sharpie works a little bit better because I think drawing on the batting is a little rough on those pens. See here's like the, see I can't pull this. I mean I could because it'll lift up, but the uh, fusible, the, um, you know, the basting spray is on there. There we go. So this will conclude 
basting the star block on the front side. Then we will rotate. Then I will flip this whole thing over and do the back. And on the back, my uh, batting does not reach out past the back here as much as it did on the front. So I really don't need to draw anything. I will just do the exact same process of lifting this up, just like we did. Do a little spray basing, and I'm pretty close, so that way I don't really get any overspray. And I, I can feel it running out too. But I have another can. Press this, and then I'll finish it up. Do you remember I told you that in my basket over here that I had to empty the other day was my walking foot? And this is where I keep the walking foot. So my koala table has this wonderful set of drawers right down here. Um, there's also some storage there for hoops and things. I've got thread that I piece with on here. And in the, the drawers, they're these soft closed drawers. They're super nice. So in the top, I have like all of my uh, needles, um, bobbins, more bobbins, other things. And here is the walking foot. So this guy, this is a dual feed. Uh, it's computerized walking foot, which is why it is so freaking big. So the Solaris has a big walking foot like this, the Crescendo, the Destiny, um, it's all because it's electronic. And that's why your walking foot will be sort of like seeing this part, but not have all this big electronics attached to it. I have two shades of blue that I'm looking at. Uh, one is lighter, one is pretty light, and the other one is, it's not an identical match for this, but it is much, much closer. So putting one single strand out is how you decide how you want it to look. Put the single strand over the blue, the yellow, and the white so that you can see how it looks. And that lets you, you know, it's going to have more definition, that darker one, than this lighter one. The lighter one is interesting because you would think maybe it would pop a lot on the blue. See, the, the darker one pretty much disappears on the blue. That won't even be seen. Here we'll be able to see the wave definition on, you know, it'll be very light against the yellow and very light against the white. So I'm actually leaning towards doing the light blue versus the darker blue. Okay, leaning means I'm using this one. <laughs> Well, I'm all set up to sew. I have a Starbucks. I went ahead and took a little walk and ended up at the Starbucks, which is by my house. Now I'm back, ready to go. I have that light blue thread uh, on the Solaris here. I have got my tablet, which I'm going to be running. I don't know what I'm gonna run. I might run some of the Garden Answer Lady shows or one of the other garden shows just to listen while I'm doing the wave stitch. Also, a bunch of you told me I absolutely have to watch my big fat Greek wedding, so I need to research that. I'm not a big movie person, so I have to go find it on Amazon because I don't have any of those other uh, channels that you all watch movies on. So I am all ready to spend a little bit of time. I figure this one is probably going to take maybe an hour to do the wave stitch, and I will be starting. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to start here let me just turn this light off here's the panel of my solaris here's the solaris my girl and the wave stitch is 219 out here i have the walking foot on and ready set go so there the stitch is with the blue okay so it looks good that's the light blue that's the lighter one and you can see it, which is good. That's what I wanted. So I will go ahead and go across the whole quilt. The quilting took about an hour, and now I'm going to trim it. I've got out this the great big ruler so that I will just go along and trim all four edges and then put the hanging sleeve down for this. After trimming off the four of these, I have one that is wide enough for the sleeve. So the other ones are skinnier and I will just pull those fabrics away from the batting, you know, pull, I have to pull a little bit of threads out there every so often, but I will take those and most of those can be used for binding. So this guy here, I don't think I got on the edge of it too much. There we go. So it is ready. This will be the hanging sleeve. 
So how does that work? It is so simple. It is just a strip of fabric that will be sewn into the binding on the back side so that I can put a dowel rod in there and hang it on the door. So let's take a look. Now the first thing you want to do when you take a look here is decide the quilting on it is you do you want your quilting to go vertical when it's hanging or horizontal when it's hanging whoops horizontal <laughs> so the hanging sleeve i'm going to have it horizontal which means when i turn it over my uh my my quilting goes across the quilt left to right rather than top to bottom so i want to flip it over and be sure i keep that orientation so that it doesn't get messed up so if this is the top and here is my hanging sleeve. Now I will trim this to be sure it is even, but I basically need it, I usually make it about as, as wide because I am going to turn under the edges. So I make it as wide as the quilt and I can just chop off that end there. So now it's as wide as the quilt. What I will do, and I'm gonna take it and put it on this side so you can see it a little bit better, what I'm talking about. So it's as wide as the quilt. The bottom half will be pressed up a fourth of an inch or so. And that is going to give me a clean edge to stitch down. Then I will take the both ends and fold them under twice. Here it is turned under and I just top stitched it so that both of them have a nice clean edge. Now the raw edge, that would be this one, the raw edge, because this edge is just folded under so that I have it already turned under. Now I put this, I just center it on the top the back of the top. So do you see? I'm just gonna put it down and center it. So there it is, just lifting it up. I will put a few of the Wonder Clips to hold it along the top in place. Um, this is just so that when I'm putting the binding on, it doesn't accidentally, you know, move. We wanna just keep it in place. Now I don't have it right out to the edges because the dowel rod will come out here. Now I do like to glue the edge down that I'm going to hand applique this. I will hand applique this, this edge of the flap. So you see where it is now? The flap is just on here. I'll take one edge up. See, I just laid it on the back. Uh, and generally I like to make it the same fabric if I can as the backing. So I'm going to just put some glue. Do you see that? I'm just running a little glue line along here then taking the edge of the hanging sleeve and putting that down so it doesn't then flip up while I'm sewing. Okay, now I'll just put the binding on. Next is the dowel rod. So here's the dowel rod. You can get them at any craft store, clip them to the size you want for your quilt, for your door. And then what we did was put these little screws with a, a loop on the end. So they're just screwed into the end really, really easy. Now you can't put your thread or your ribbon on until you put it through the hanging sleeve. Otherwise, you won't, it won't work. So, <laughs> so what we're gonna do here is show you. So here's the quilt, the star quilt, all quilted up. And then on the back is my hanging sleeve. Now I haven't stitched it down yet. I will do that. I will do that after I do the video. So I put the dowel rod through here. So now it is, you know, in here and I need to have something, you can put a ribbon up here, whatever you wanna put on your door. I've been using this 12 weight Aurifil thread because first of all, this thread is pretty much the color of my door, a little bit darker, so you don't really see it. And I wanna have, I'm, I usually double it. So one, because you know you open the front door and close the front door and I just feel like it gives me a little bit extra. So I will take this and then double, double the thread and tie it now that it's actually in the quilt so that I can tie it on either end of these uh, loops. So the first one is, and I know I've got this icky sticker on here. Someday I'm gonna take that off. <laughs> just roll it to the back. So you just, I just do like two knots on this end, okay? And then you do want to check that you didn't get it too long. I try to keep it fairly tight, you know, like so that it's not, I don't want like a big old loop like this because my door, because the way my door is, I like to get it as tight as possible and then I just trim it. But I need to have a little bit of give because what I do is I take this and make like a loop 
and wrap it around the nail on my front door. So I will put the other end in this in here and tie it off and then we'll go to the front door. And there it looks on my front door. And you can't really see the red. Now you can see the dowel rod, which you know I could paint that someday. I keep thinking of painting it red, but that hasn't happened yet. But here's the thread just to show you. It's tied on the corner and then it's looped up onto the screw, which we painted the same as the door. And I just wrapped it around once so that it doesn't really shift. That keeps it from shifting. There we go. Strong for Ukraine. So if you've not made your block today or yet <laughs> today, you can go ahead and get that done, get it done. Make the block, it works up really quickly. It only took me an hour to actually do this quilting. Uh, so you can get yours done. And then if you're going to do, will you be my neighbor, which I hope you will, then you're gonna do the first block today. Whoops, this end. You're gonna get the block number one with the gorgeous big house and the tree. Okay, my friend, this is a lot for one video. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you. I'll see you online.